Hello and welcome to day four of our beginner's crash course in sewing. So what I really wanted to cover today was some other stitches on the machine because I know most of you look at the sewing machine and you've got so many stitches and sometimes that can be a little bit overwhelming so I wanted to go through the other stitches that really you need to know about and they're predominantly the zigzag stitch. So we're going to have a little look at the standard zigzag and the three step zigzag and see where we would use these stitches and how they're going to help you with your projects. So join me back here at the sewing machine so we can get started. Before we move on to sewing on the machine, I wanted to have a little refresh over the buttons and things that you may need to change when working with the zigzag stitch. Now we're going to be firstly working with the standard zigzag stitch, which is number two on our grid of stitches here. The standard zigzag stitch moves from left to right with each individual stitch. So we need to change our stitch selector button to number two. Obviously I would recommend that you check your own individual machine to see where you need to make the changes for this. Now I wanted to point out where you will be changing the length and the width for this stitch as we discuss this whilst we're sewing. Now this button here will be to change the length of the stitch and the little green dial here will be used to change the width of the stitch. So check with your machine, check the things that you need to know and join me back here so we can get started. Now we're going to start sewing the zigzag stitch. We're going to start by positioning the foot on the machine down, holding the threads with the left hand and turning the hand wheel on the right of the machine to position the needle into the fabric. And this is the best way to always start your sewing. Now we're going to have a little go sewing down this length of fabric with our zigzag stitch. Now I'm starting my stitch on a one millimeter length and five millimeter width as an example. So you will notice that the needle will move from left to right in the foot as you're completing the stitch. Now you may find you need to go backwards and forwards, it really depends on what you're using your zigzag stitch for. Predominantly they're used for sort of applique or decorative designs, so you will find that you don't need to necessarily have a guide on this edge here, but you will be following something um, on your fabric that you wish to adhere to the fabric or to decorate. Now what I really want from you with this stitch is to really have a play with your machine and the width and length settings so that you can get to know how they work. So for example, let's change our width here and let's move our width down to say two millimetres. And you'll see all of a sudden that the needle is now not moving from as far left to right as it was previously. It's a much smaller width to the zigzag. Now what I would recommend that you do is that you create a line of stitching where you adjust the width gradually of the zigzag and then do the same way you adjust the length so that you can have a play with how the settings work on your machine. If you join me back here in a second I'll show you a couple of the settings that I've used for the zigzag and what you may use them for. Now I want you to have a play with the zigzag stitch, have a go at changing the width and the length and see how the stitch changes. Now on this line here I've had a go at changing the length of the stitch. I started with a 1mm length, moved to 2.5mm and finally to 4mm and you can see how the stitch has actually spread out. On this side I worked at changing the width of the stitch and I started with 5mm, moved to 2.5 and then finally 0.5mm and you can see how the width of the stitch has changed. Have a go at this and actually understand how the machine is changing the width and the length and how that can affect the stitch that the machine is producing. So what do I tend to use these stitches for? Now I've got a couple of examples here and these are the things that I do use quite readily. Now the first one is something that I use when I'm maybe decorating a product or I want to do some applique. In this case the width of the stitch is 5mm and the length of the stitch is 1mm. You want to have the width of the stitch rather wide when working with applique so that it is picking up the fabric that you're appliqueing but you want the length of the stitch to be quite close together so that it hides any of the fraying edges of the fabric. Now another thing that I use very often really is a stitch that would allow me to sew on stretch knit fabrics. 
Okay, so that's a slightly more advanced technique working with stretch knits, but this is a stitch that you can use when working with them so that you still have a little bit of stretch in the fabric because if you're just working with a straight stitch, it can stop any of the stretch taking place and can eventually break your product. So here we're working with a width of 0.5 millimeters and a length of 2.5 millimeters. So you've got a pretty much a straight stitch with a tiny little zigzag in it, which will allow a slight amount of stretch to take place. Finally, the other thing that I tend to use the zigzag for is for finishing garments if you haven't got an overlocker present. Now join me back here in a second and I will show you how to use that. I also wanted to go through with you a little zigzag stitch that you can use to finish the edge of fabric if you don't have an overlocker and want to prevent it from fraying. Now using the standard zigzag stitch we're going to change the length to 1.5 and the width to 2 millimeters. As before we're going to start with our foot down, hold onto the threads to position the needle into the fabric. Now what I tend to do here is actually line up the edge of my foot with the edge of the fabric because what would have happened is that you would have already sewn your seam and you would actually be doing this to the seam allowances of a garment to stop them from fraying. So you would have had a 5 8 or 1.5 centimeter seam and we're going to be doing this in the seam allowance so we can then trim it down afterwards. So run the edge of the fabric along the edge of the foot here. Now we are going to start here by doing a couple of stitches forwards and a couple of stitches backwards and this will secure the stitch before beginning and we're going to guide the fabric again not watching the needle we're only watching the edge of the fabric in line with the foot down through the machine and this is going to create a very very small little zigzag that we're going to be able to trim next to in a second and this should help stop fabric from fraying all the way to the end of your seam allowance and then we will be going backwards and forwards at the end. Again only a couple of stitches backwards, a couple of stitches forwards, our needle is raised, we can lift our foot and you can have a quick peek at the stitch. Now draw me back here with a pair of scissors and I will show you how we trim this down and how this actually looks on a garment. Now we've completed the little zigzag stitch, we're actually going to trim down with a small pair of scissors as close to the stitch as possible. Now you need to be careful here not to actually cut through the stitches, but you do want to cut as close to the stitching as possible as this will help prevent the fraying. So little embroidery scissors or something that's very small and sharp will help make this easier work and you'll complete this all the way down and then finish your seam as you normally would with pressing. Now if I show you, you can see what I've done just there. Now if I show you a little garment that has had this done to it, hopefully you can see the finished results. Now on this garment you can just about from this side see the little zigzag stitching. If I flip this over so you can see on the other side, you can see the little zigzag and the cut that has happened very close to it. You can also see the seam that was sewn and obviously that was pressed open and this happened in the seam allowances of the garment and it was then trimmed down to work like this. I find that it works brilliantly and really does stop fraying. So it's fabulous if you don't have an overlocker. Obviously your machine may have an overcast stitch and that would do a fantastic job as well. So I would recommend getting out your manual and seeing what your machine has. Now you're happy with working with the standard zigzag stitch, I wanted to move on to show you how to make the amendments to the machine to produce the three step zigzag stitch. Now the three step zigzag stitch is a stitch that will stitch three stitches in either direction to create the zigzag. Now the first thing you need to do is choose the number from the stitch guide that we've got up here and our three step zigzag on this machine is number three. Obviously I would recommend that you check your own individual manual for these settings because you have to be quite precise with the length and width to get the right looking finish with your three step zigzag on these machines anyway. So the length that's required on this machine for a three-step zigzag is 0.5 millimeters. So we're going to turn that through to 0.5, which is on this little picture here of a buttonhole. And for the 
width of this stitch, it needs to be on number five, which it's already on. Join me back here and we can get started. Now we're going to have a look at sewing the three-step zigzag stitch. Now, as before, our foot is down and our needle is in our fabric. Now, this stitch works by creating three small straight stitches in either direction to create a zigzag. As I mentioned earlier, with this machine, it does have to be on certain settings and we can't adjust the length and the width as we did with the other zigzag stitch. However, you will find with other machines that this may be an option and obviously I suggest that you have a play. Now this stitch is predominantly used when working with lingerie or maybe stretchy fabrics, but it's also very nice as a decorative stitch. Now if I finish this off with a couple of back stitches and I will show you what that looks like. Now it is a lovely stitch to do, and as I said, it does have some function as well as decorative uses. But if you do have a machine that allows you to play with the stitch length and stitch width, I would recommend that you do so. Hopefully you've enjoyed learning about the zigzag stitch and the changes in width and length on your sewing machine. I hope that you've been able to learn new techniques that you will use with future projects, from working with applique and decorative stitches, to working and sewing with knits, lingerie, or just finishing the edge of your fabrics without an overlocker. Thank you for watching this tutorial and I will see you in day five.